Hello, welcome to another review of mine. Afterwards, please take the chance to visit my website at www.thescenebeaver.com. The link can be found below. Today we are going over the top Hellraisers list. It's simple and straightforward, thespians with the most hellraising antics in cinema history. In order to qualify, he or she must be well known and has either 1. committed various crimes, 2. been arrested and or served time, 3. a dangerous temper tantrum, 4. had relationships with criminal figures, b. been a notorious drunk, 6. done illegal drugs, 7. had highly publicized affair with a celebrity or a powerful person, 8. been difficult to work with on set, 9. bankrupt a movie studio, 10. died ignobly and at or a relatively young age. This list is limited to the top 15 in order with 3 unordered honorable mentions. While ranking the thespians, I simultaneously thinking about the shit they pulled that have defied belief and are able to work nonetheless. The most egregious behaviors, the better. Also, the bigger the star is, the more unbelievable their acts are. Sean Young Apart from being difficult to work with, Sean Young stalked James Wood so much that he had to file a restraining order and then a $6 million lawsuit against her. She made Oliver Stone angry after persistently demanding that Daryl Hannah be replaced by her in Wall Street. After her injury on the set as Vicki Bale, during the filming of Batman, she also begged the studio to be taken back for the final next sequel while wearing her homemade Catwoman costume, especially on the Joan Rivers show. Chevy Chase Ever wonder why you never saw Chevy Chase all that much after the 80s? It's because he is the king of assholes, a mean guy, and a huge put-down artist. Saddled with the reputation of leaving the set early and not following through his work, he got into a fist fight with Bill Murray, hit and harassed females, screamed at his co-workers, and displayed racist, misogynistic, and homophobic behavior. Number 13, Richard Harris. One of the heaviest drinkers to come out of Ireland, Richard Harris, could be found in a regular pub. He was difficult to work with on set and made nearly no friends in the movie business. Sporting a massive cocaine habit, he nearly died from an overdose in 1978. Women feared his physically abusive behavior. One of Richard Harris's ex-wives described him as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Number 12, Earl Flynn. Behind the facade of swashbuckling Hollywood sex symbol, Earl Flynn was a chronic alcoholic who had a parade of underage girls for sex. In 1943, he stood trial for charges of statutory rape, but was ultimately acquitted. Coming to work, Flynn often snuck drugs and alcohol. Additionally, he was involved in Rose with his wife that caused him to show up physically injured. Number 11, Lawrence Tierney. If anybody had true menacing presence, it's Lawrence Tierney. People, even his co-stars, were literally afraid of him being around him. Look no further than his two films, Dillinger and Born to Kill. It's also why he was cast as Elaine Bennett's father in Seinfeld. In and out of jails repeatedly for drunkenness and brawls, Lawrence Tierney never quietly went into the night. Number 10, Faye Dunaway. A perfectionist at heart, Faye Dunaway is among the most notoriously difficult actresses to work with despite counting on her to give an excellent performance. Set her off the wrong way and you'll be either verbally abused or physically harmed. After being denied a restroom break during the filming of Chinatown, she threw a cup of her urine in Roman Polanski's face. Number 9, Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed was a major booze hound and frequently appeared on TV drunk. He once got in a fight that left his face permanently scarred, damaging his chances to be the next James Bond. Oliver Reed's partnership with madman Ken Russell cemented his fame by appearing in two notorious pictures, Women in Love and The Devils, with the first requiring him to wrestle Alan Bates bare naked.
Number eight, Charlie Sheen. A notorious customer of Hollywood, Madame Heidi Flaces, hookers, and many other prostitutes and porn stars, Charlie Sheen has a long history of physical violence and death threats against women and ex-wives, including Denise Richards. Many filed straining orders against him. Having abused drugs during crack cocaine and going in and out of drug rehabs constantly for decades, he was finally tested HIV positive after years of unprotected sex. Number 7. Dennis Hopper A longtime psycho drug addict and alcoholic, Dennis Hopper was legendary for his temper tantrums. Physically dangerous to be around with, he had a history of abuse against women. His increasingly erratic behavior was a problem for many during the filming of Easy Rider. He was also a gun nut and held crew meetings with a couple of handguns loaded on the table. Number 6. Tupac Shakur If you heard of the expression, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword, Tupac Shakur exemplified it the best. The tattoo-clad rap artist committed crimes all his life and served a stint in prison for first-degree sexual abuse. He was also involved in shooting incidents. By 1996, the transgressions has finally caught up with Tupac Shakur as he was gunned down in Las Vegas in at age 25. Number 5, Steve McQueen. Aptly described as the Trogaldile, Steve McQueen was a white beater who cheated on his spouses openly and was difficult to work with on the set. He regularly abused alcohol and drugs, including marijuana, cocaine, and LSD. Landing on Charles Manson's hit list, Steve McQueen planned to be at Sharon Tate's house during that fateful night, but had to cancel at the last minute. While at home, he devoured TV soap operas alone while high on drugs. Number 4. Marilyn Monroe Drunk and on drugs, Marilyn Monroe had been long disliked by many for not coming to the set on time. Her lack of preparation was a big issue as well. A couple of her marriages may have been notorious. None of them was more than the affair with JFK. Even she was sleeping with his brother RFK at the time. Marilyn Monroe is reportedly to have died from a drug overdose, but it's likely she was ordered assassinated by Kennedy brothers to be kept quiet permanently. Number 3. Frank Sinatra A notorious asshole by all accounts, Frank Sinatra had a legendary temper that was backed by mob connections. If one dared to cross him, he'll have him beaten up by one of his own men and or hold a personal grudge that lasted forever. Frank Sinatra was the middleman among Hollywood, the Mafia, and the White House, especially during JFK's heyday. He may have played a part in the murder of Marilyn Monroe. Number 2. Richard Burton A longtime alcoholic, Richard Burton's voice may be famous, but he was a true hellraiser. His marriage to Elizabeth Taylor is the stuff that legends are made of. They made news wherever they went, even turning one sleepy town into a vacation destination. Burton cheated on his wife with married Elizabeth Taylor on the set of Cleopatra, which almost bankrupt 20th Century Fox. He sometimes drank himself to death and appeared in movies inebriated, not realizing he had done them such as in The Klansman. Number 1. Marlon Brando In a class of his own, Marlon Brando's defiant antics remain legendary. Nobody, not even many Hellraisers on the list, comes close to what he did. His refusal to play nice on many movies sets, including Mutiny on the Bounty and The Island of Dr. Monroe, caused so much difficulties to the detriment of everybody. Marlon Brando famously refused the Oscar for The Godfather by sending the American Indian female. His son killed the boyfriend of his half-sister, compelling Marlon to testify in a sentence hearing. Honorable mentions are Russell Crowe, Robert Downey Jr., and Peter O'Toole. Thank you so much for coming in to watch my review. 
Don't forget to visit my website at www.theceiviewer.com.